Oh, shoot. Dang. Damn it. Fuck. Motherfucker. Fuck. Sucker. Goddamn fucking cunt water dick eater. What? Why? There wasn't even a monster there this time. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Venerable Grand Games Quisitor Bartek here. Believe it or not, those were not angry curses. Those were actually curses of enjoyment. But how is it possible, you ask? Well, as someone that I used to know said on more than one occasion, Stay a while and listen. We convene today to take a very early look at a pre-early access version, an actual working demo, of a game called Spark in the Dark. And right off the bat, let me tell you, despite the happy-go-lucky title, this one here is no nursery rhyme. It also doesn't offer any cheerful puppies and kitties and twiddly teddies kitty stuff. Quite the contrary. Spark in the Dark is actually a light at the end of the tunnel for fans of old-school, unforgiving, demanding, grim, and at times utterly butt-clenching dungeon-crawling action. It gives hope to those who are fed up with the oversimplified, hand-holding, dumbed-down games that were often served today by AAA studios. Spark in the Dark is a treat, a rare gem in today's gaming landscape. And I gotta tell you, I'm loving every damn minute of it, despite getting my ass whooped on a regular. The crew behind this game is a small indie studio called Stellar Fish. The developers themselves call Spark in the Dark a hardcore dungeon crawler in the dark fantasy genre. They also note that it was inspired by the great dungeons from J.R.R. Tolkien's Legendarium and the Chronicles of Siala by Russian writer Alexei Pehov. The game features permadeath and does not feature any save slots, at least in the current version. And boy oh boy is it refreshing. The farther you are in the dungeon and the more you level up and kit out your character, the more tense it gets. You're painfully aware that a botched swing of an axe or a warhammer may well be the last thing your little avatar does. From there, it's either restart dungeon or go and have a glass of the old Aquavitae IRL to calm those shattered nerves. Either way, you will be back for another run, because despite being pre-early access, this game is already oh so good and addictive. Before you enter the endless dungeon called Dargroth, you choose one of four hero classes. The devs say that on release there will be at least five to choose from, but in the demo you can play as the warrior, the blacksmith, the hunter, or the thief. Each class has certain skills and abilities that the others either lack or have a different combination of. For example, the blacksmith can repair equipment and gets a bonus to using warhammers, whereas the thief can backstab, pick locks, and gets a higher starting skill in light armor. And speaking of skills, you level these in the game by, well, using them. Say you start out as a hunter with a bonus to using axes, but you prefer to penetrate the darkness of the dungeon with a cold, stiff sword blade in your hand. The more monsters you whack and slay, the higher that sword skill will become, eventually outgrowing that starting bonus for axes. The same goes for your class's unique skills, such as disarming traps, using the crowbar to open locked chests, or leveling up your shield proficiency. The more you do something, the better you get at it. Clear, logical, and actually quite rewarding. Okay, so after you choose your starting class, you get to pick your hero path, which is basically the difficulty. The easiest one, the Forgotten Dungeon, is good for getting a feel for the game, the weapons, the mechanics, the hitboxes, and the movement. But mind you, it's still easy to die. The medium difficulty is visibly tougher, with the death of the main character becoming a much more commonplace occurrence, and not only because the enemies have just more HP or hit harder. 
no, no. There are many more traps, some of which are not clearly visible, less gear to find, and the debuffs you get from being hit are more severe. The nightmare difficulty is, as the name suggests, hellishly brutal, brutally hard, and hardly survivable. During my over than 20 attempts at this setting, I never made it past the fourth room, yet strangely, I never got frustrated with failure. Yes, it's possible that my meager progress is just a result of me sucking at the game, but the challenge is definitely still there. Once you've selected the extent to which you want to experience this weirdly masochistic yet satisfying gameplay loop, you're dropped into the dungeon. So far there is only one level, but Stellar Fish said on Steam that the full game will include many, many more. They also added that the launch version will be procedurally generated to some extent. According to the devs, the monsters, equipment, loot, stats, and some level elements will be generated differently each time you enter the dungeon. Whether the levels themselves will also be randomly generated remains to be seen, but the community is pushing and pleading for this feature. In your first moments in the dungeon, you will feel like a mosquito. Literally. Frail, vulnerable, and inevitably drawn to one of the few light sources scattered around the map. The light is your lifeline. First off, it prevents you from losing your mind, and more importantly, your hit points after staying in the darkness for too long. Secondly, it regenerates your health, although quite slowly. This only adds more gravitas to considering every move you make and every enemy you face. During your journey, you will find lamps lying randomly on the floor, but beware. Each has a limited amount of fuel, so use it sparingly and wisely. It may take a long time before, and if, you find another one. And that titular spark in the dark attached to your belt may save your life, because not only does prolonged darkness drain those precious hit points, but it also hides an abundance of traps, collapsed floor tiles that'll cause you to fall to your death, as well as lurking monsters, ready to pounce at you from the unlit corner of the room. Without spoiling too much, on your way through Dargroth you will encounter various types of huge spiders, several kinds of the undead armed with a plethora of weaponry with different effective range and dealing diverse damage, and many other hideous and mortally dangerous creatures. You can dispatch them in a couple of ways, from your standard weapon swinging, to luring them into traps, and even to maneuvering and moving in such a way as to cause them to hit and damage each other. The way you decide to face them will depend on your hero class, your equipment, your preferred playstyle, as well as circumstance. Stamina management is a core part of the game's mechanics, and I'm delighted to report that the stamina bar is short and does not replenish instantaneously. In Spark in the Dark, you use stamina to sprint, dodge, block, and swing your weapons, and that means that you constantly have to make choices to maintain a fragile balance of managing the precious resource, one which could spell the difference between surviving and perishing in the dungeon. Forever. To aid you in your quest, you will find the occasional area of respite, restoration, and relaxation small safe rooms with beds, and that sweet, coveted light source. Your character can sleep in a cozy bed to get rid of wounds, poisoning, fatigue, and other harmful effects suffered on your run. This is also the spot to repair weapons or armor, provided you have the necessary items, such as a grindstone. The safe room is also, as far as I know, the only place where you can read up on the game lore found in books picked up in the dungeon. You'll also be presented with snippets of the story of Darkroth while out adventuring. These can be found in certain places on the walls. The devs are promising rich, deep and compelling lore for the player to discover in the final release of the game. No words yet on NPCs such as vendors, despite there being coins in the game. In the demo, these are supposed to be thrown on the ground and used as markers to tag the chambers you already visited on your run to make the journey at least a bit easier. A nice hat tip to the fairy tale of Hansel and Gretel who used breadcrumbs to mark their way home. Spoiler, it didn't work out all that well for them. 
when it comes to the presentation, the game oozes atmosphere. The dungeon itself is exactly as how I imagined dark fantasy dungeons as a kid. Foreboding, ominous, mysterious, filled with dangers and uncertainty. The feeling of despair, loneliness and inevitable demise is compounded by the incredibly climactic, intense music. Although there aren't many audio tracks in the demo version, I'm optimistic that this is just a taste of the epic symphony of death and suffering that the devs will treat us to in the full release. The game is in my opinion hellishly promising and dare I say already incredibly playable and enjoyable. But don't take my word for it, if you like badass hard as nails old school dungeon crawlers Go to Steam and download the free demo which will be available until the launch of Early Access, planned later for this year. Oh, and if you like what you see, hear and play, make sure to wishlist the game to show the developers some love and support. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Just as I'd appreciate it if you did your part to FTA, meaning feed that algorithm. Please comment, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, or a thumbs down if you didn't. Also, kindly consider hitting the subscribe button and notifications bell below. You can check out my Twitter and Instagram, which just like my YouTube channel and Spark in the Dark are nascent yet ambitious. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you next time. Bartek out.